understand the conditions under which an implication is true. Not only to decide whether the, a mathematical statement is true, but in order to prove that it is. Proofs might seem scary, especially if you've had a bad high school geometry experience. But all we are really doing is explaining very carefully why a statement is true. If you understand the truth conditions for an implication, you already have the outline for a proof. Hey everyone, real quick, I just wanna mention that this video is a part of a whole course that I made. You can find a link to this entire course in the description below and make sure to click on that subscribe button. Now, the crappy proving techniques that you learned in geometry, you can just pretend that never happened. We will not be doing those proofs because they do not reflect what a proof should be. And in fact, in every discrete math course that I've ever seen at any university or college, among many textbooks as well, people don't do these weird geometry high school proofs. They don't make two columns. They pretty much give an essay as to why something is true. A proof is just a logical defense of a statement. You can make that defense in the same way lawyers defend their clients. Lawyers don't draw two columns for a jury to defend their case. They gather the facts of what you know, and they use those facts to show that a statement is true. That's it. That is a proof. Now in discrete math, we will be proving many implications with what are known as direct proofs. Now to prove an implication P implies Q with a direct proof, it is enough to assume P and from it deduce Q. Perhaps a better way to say this is to, that to prove a statement of, a, of the form P implies Q directly, you have to explain why Q is true, but you get to assume that P is true first. After all, you only really care about whether Q is true in the case that P is as well. There are other techniques to prove statements, implications, and others that we will encounter throughout our studies in this course. And new proof techniques are discovered all the time. Direct proof is the easiest and most elegant style of proof and has the advantage that such a proof often does a great job of explaining why the statement is true. Let's do an example together. Let's prove that if two numbers A and B are even, then their sum A plus B is even. So when we're making this proof, we get to assume the hypothesis that two numbers A and B are even. Now, I'm gonna write an essay. I'm not gonna write a thousand word essay. I'm just gonna write maybe four or five lines. And it's my explanation as to why A plus B is even, assuming that A and B are both even. So let's assume A and B are even. We get this for free. We get to assume this, and now let's try to show that the sum of these two numbers is even. Well, a great way for uh, to, to run a direct proof is to explain what this hypothesis means. Like, let's unravel some definitions here. So this means that A equals two times K for some integer K, and then I use that symbol to mean is an element of the integers, and B equals two times L for some integer L. So that's just what it means to be even. So I haven't assumed anything extra, I'm just using the definitions of what it means to be even, and then I'm gonna use these to my advantage to try to show that A plus B is even. So let's take a look at A plus B. How do we know it's even? Well, what does it mean to be even? That means it's two times an integer. So we need to show that A plus B is two times some integer. Well, we know what A and B are. A is 2K and B is 2L. So A plus B is 2K plus 2L. And I can rewrite this as two times K plus L. Therefore, A plus B is even. Now, let me explain what just happened here. We show that A plus B is two times an integer k plus l. If k and l are integers, then k plus l is an integer as well. Some professors might require you to explain why that is, and that's because addition is closed under the integers. Um, a professor really shouldn't require that though. So therefore, a plus b is even. We show that a plus b is even by assuming that a and b are even, which means that a and b are even implies that a plus b is even. Now, something that's really important about writing proofs 
I put a little check mark here. Just that just means I'm done with the proof. Um, some people put like QED. QED. That's one thing that I've seen a lot of professors use. Um, some people will make a little check box and check it <laughs> to show that they are done. And some people will just sign their proofs. You can just, you know, write a signature or something like that. So this sort of argument shows up outside of math as well, though. If you ever found yourself starting an argument with, hypothetically, let's assume, then you have attempted a direct proof of your desired conclusion. In the next lecture, we'll discuss the converse and the contrapositive implications. So I'll see you then.